this whole thing is called a session. That session is no longer anonymous, and that's okay. Uh, what we can do is close our browser, tear all this down, and rebuild it again. Hola. Mi nombre es Juan Lovell y estoy aquí para ahorrarte mucho dinero con un código de descuento genial. Sí, estoy hablando de sportsmansguide.com. Ahí puedes encontrar el mejor equipo de caza, pesca y cualquier actividad al aire libre. Recuerda utilizar nuestro código WARPOET. Yo soy Juan Lovell. Gracias. All right, hey folks, welcome back. I've got cybersecurity extraordinaire, professional hacker, Troy. Troy's my homeboy and he helps us out with cybersecurity stuff around here. He's here to serve you as well. You have a business, a firm that literally does this for a living, helping yep. find vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and things like that and closing the gap. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna talk about how to be anonymous online or as close to perfectly anonymous as we can get. And it's a, it's a tricky thing because anonymity and security go hand in hand. <clears throat> there is no such thing as secure. It's an ideal that we pursue. Uh, all security really is, and anonymity for that matter, is buying time. And the question is, how much time are you willing to pay for to protect whatever asset it is you're trying to protect? Got for it. example, you wouldn't buy a $200,000 safe to protect your, your Glock 19. Cool. Doesn't well, make sense. Great, and I get the fact of, hey, protect the Glocks, but why really worry about much of this stuff online anyway? If you're, if you're doing the right thing and you're not doing anything seedy, why care too much about online privacy, anonymity, that kind of stuff? Well, it's, uh, the internet is the Wild West. Uh, it has been for a while, and things that an average person can do can expose them to certain, uh, certain attacks. Online banking is a, is a great example, especially in a business context. Uh, I personally don't do online banking at all. I do all my banking eye to eye with the banker in person, period. Um, I don't like to use ATMs either, just because of what the technological capabilities of, of attackers that, that use those. Uh, but we do live in a free society. And in a free society, I do think that we should have a right to privacy. And not because we're protecting something that is bad or malicious, although it can be used to that effect, but to protect ourselves from other actors in the same way that we would carry a gun. Uh, we have our, you know, our police force to protect us. We have our, our online agents to protect us, but that's not enough. Our responsibility lies with us and it, it behooves us to take that into our hands. Okay. And Very I'm going to show you how. <laughs> show me how Jedi master. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep right. us safe and private. So there's, there's two dimensions to this. There's a hardware dimension and a software dimension. We're going to primarily focus on software. And what I'll touch on the hardware is you're going to want to do all of this stuff from a dedicated machine, preferably a laptop, preferably a laptop that can't be traced back to you through like, you know, some credit card transaction. So cause you bought it anonymously, anonymously, say through I Craigslist. Didn't, I didn't go to Best Buy and use my card. You didn't go to Best Buy and use your card. All now right. you could get really paranoid, you know, pay a neighbor kid to go do an exchange. No, let's just not be partially paranoid yeah. for the partially sake of paranoid in for this that. video. So your, your hardware is important. Make sure that that can't be tied to you. I'd also recommend removing the sensor array. You can look at videos on that, the microphones and cameras and all that sort of thing. You will avoid the warranty if you do buy it new. So your mileage may vary and be careful because these things can be delicate. Uh, that's what I'll say about hardware. Question. So for the hardware thing of what if about just tape over the camera and then get one of those microphone jacks mm -hmm. to go in the input whatever thing so, that yeah. has like a male, female end, but nothing plugged into it. So microphones in a laptop are not like your traditional microphones. Of course. All right. Yeah. So no, that doesn't work. Too. Yeah. There's a whole rabbit hole there that we could go down. I it's recommend not. physically disconnecting them. Mm, yeah. All right. Yep. I tried guys, whatever, <laughs> jerk. All right. So first things first, you've got your hardware, you need something called an operating system. You may have heard that word thrown around before. Windows is an operating system, Android is an operating system, uh, Mac OS is an operating system. It's basically the in-between between, between your applications and your hardware. And that translates the, the data so that your application developers don't have to write an application for every possible laptop out there. I've heard Mac is generally safer than the other platforms. It is, but it's not anonymous. There is a, uh, in a There are several operating systems out there that are. They are built specifically for anonymity. My favorite one is called Tails. 
Tails is a live Linux distribution. What does, it, what does that mean? You may have heard Linux before. Yeah. It sounds spooky and kind of the world of the techno nerds. It's really not. It's just another operating system that's free. Not free as in free beer, free as in freedom. Anybody can work on it. I actually have my own kernel contributions to it. Uh, it's a fantastic OS. In fact, Linux is a type of Unix, which is what Mac OS is based off of too. That said, Tails is a live Linux uh, distribution, which means it exists not on your laptop, but on a thumb drive. Mm -hmm. And every time you boot it up, it's like the first time you boot it up. So if you pull that thumb drive, everything is gone and there's no record of it. So Tails, and I, I will warn you, it is a little bit of a process to set it up and it, it'll look at first that it's really complicated, but there's a lot of, Tails has their step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do it. You need a couple of thumb drives, Super easy, just follow the steps and you will have your, your live Linux right, distribution. Already you're like, man, I'm just not ready to commit to this level you don't need of that. effort, anonymity of like, ah, uh, just open up my sure. computer and disconnecting. So, do you have any kind of low hanging fruits to yep. minimize my exposure, risk mitigation? So yeah, so all of these measures yeah. that we're talking about can be defeated. Uh, it's, we talk about security and anonymity as like an onion. You wanna add as many layers as you deem necessary. Right. If you need a, a laptop that's completely untraceable, do it. If you need Tails, do that. I use Tails for certain things that I do online where I, I don't want any record of it. Uh, but I recommend using Tails because a lot of the, the software that we're talking about is already built into it. Got it. Okay. So here, let me say it like this. Let's say, if ninjas are coming to attack my house, you know, and they're well thought through, they're gonna get in. Yeah. So really what I'm asking you is more of, how do I just be a little bit more secure than all the neighbors on the block? Sure. So when it comes to this stuff, I can't keep you out of my stuff. You're gonna yep. get me, if someone like you is after me, you're gonna get whoever sure. you want. But just, what about everyone else? How do I just be a lot better off than everyone else out there. So there's the tooling and the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, which are, I would argue what you do online is more important than what you do it with. What are the big no-no's? Well, well, we'll get to that. Let, let's talk about the how do we build an anonymous platform before we start to talk about how we maintain that anonymity, because that's where the what we do online comes from. Okay. So there's two primary tools you may have heard before, VPN, which is very popular now, and TOR, uh, stands for the Onion Router. Uh, I'm gonna explain how those work so you can kind of understand, and it's important to understand how this works because there are opportunities for these things to fail. Uh, we're gonna use, let's use my phone to represent me, okay? And, and this is me, and I, I have a, a website that John operates, we're gonna use this magazine. So here's me, here's here's your website, here's John. If I have a VPN, it's sort of like an encrypted tunnel uh, that we're going to use this toilet paper tube to represent. And our traffic is this pipe cleaner. I know it's yeah. very sophisticated visual aids here. Normally, if I'm just online hanging out and I send my traffic to your website, it's like this. It's in the clear. Now, me as a, as a hacker, I can look at that and I can change it if I want. I can remove it if I want, or I can substitute something else if I want. None of that is good. So what we do, and by the way, <laughs> this is all traceable back to me. Sure. This is all identifiable to me. So what I can do is use a VPN, which is like an encrypted tunnel between my computer and some other computer out on the internet, right? And when I send my traffic to your website, it goes through the tunnel just like that. Now your website thinks that I'm here when really I'm here. Got it. Right, so that's the first layer of anonymity, okay? So Tor is essentially a series of mini VPNs, and we're gonna represent these with these little tubes. Now, when I build, uh, when I first log in to my Tails distribution, I'm gonna build my VPN that puts me out somewhere on the internet, and then I'm gonna fire up Tor. And Tor basically creates these little VPNs to different what we call Tor nodes. They're just computers out on the internet that are dedicated to this purpose. We're gonna represent those with 300 blackout rounds. And there are a few legs to this. Just like that. So now, 
we have, it's a bit of a cybersecurity inception here. We have a tunnel within a tunnel. So our traffic, I don't have a pipe cleaner long enough, but you can visualize it. We'll go through this little v, this little tour tunnel. So if I were to attack this VPN, I have another VPN underneath to get through. Very yeah. difficult. Uh, this snakes its way through the network. And by the way, every time you fire up your Tor browser, this little leg system gets rearranged. Got it. So it's important that when you're done with one session, you close that browser and restart it or click new identity. And All right, so you're doing, you're building and getting the tails. I'm like, mm -hmm. a guy like me, I'm like, I'm gonna get on my phone and be like, ooh, what app, what VPN app is free? Download. Don't do that. Uh, by the way, not all VPNs are created equal. Okay. Got it, okay, so find a good VPN. What is a good VPN? So uh, a VPN provider, they're based out of some somewhere, right? They're okay. based either in the US or some other country. Uh, there's something called the Five Eyes, Nine Eyes, and 14 Eyes networks. They're basically networks of information sharing treaties. Mm -hmm. If you really wanna be totally anonymous, I know every VPN provider says we don't, you know, we don't uh, record your information, you can't really trust that. Uh, on, if, if you really want to keep away from, say, Uncle Sam, you would want to choose a VPN provider that's based in a country that is not contained in those treaty networks. And you can just kind of Google five eyes, nine eyes, 14 eyes. There's all kinds of information about that. Hong Kong used to be my favorite until you know recent political unrest, so I can no longer rec recommend that place. So be your own judgment. And when you watch this, it's kind of you know uh, <laughs> politically dependent. But that said, <clears throat> Your VPN is your primary. If if you had to pick one thing, I would probably do the VPN. Two things, VPN with Tor. Uh, three things, add tails to that, and Got you're it. pretty good. But there's something that you need to keep in mind. But because, could I just download a VPN that you sure. like and Tor, and mm -hmm. I'm good to get? Do I have to build things? Remember, I'm not. I'm just trying to beat the Joneses here. Yeah, no, you don't have to do anything more complicated than that. Okay. This stuff has been, it, it's made pretty easy. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. But the more important thing, this is all basic. Yeah. This is like entry level stuff. What really gets people into trouble is what they do with it. Okay. That's the trick. So here's our traffic again, right? So our traffic snakes through these series of VPNs and it's Bits out way out somewhere on the internet. Okay. Now, the first thing you need to be aware of, this is our website. Notice the traffic. I can see the traffic. I right. can manipulate that. That's because this is HTTP. You may have seen that in your browser, HTTP. Yeah. Make sure that that always says HTTPS. Got it. The S is secure. There's usually a little lock. That means that this last leg where it gets spit out on the internet is encrypted. So we can't see anything just like that. Got that it. gives us a very secure and anonymous communicate line of communication. Okay. Now, as soon as I log into into your website, there's no more anonymity. Because I, it's linked to your name and it's password. It's linked to my name so and password, yes. If you're doing all this, never insert your name or anything that sure. would distinguish you. Exactly. It's just patterns of stuff. So exactly. a very specific boutique type website that you go to and one other thing that you go to is correct not. correct so if you log into your email account that session this this whole thing is called a session that session is no longer anonymous and that's okay uh, what we can do is close our browser tear all this down and rebuild it again and that'll give us a new circuit and that means that. disconnect from my vpn reconnect vpn close tor reopen tor and all that stuff is rebuilt because I'm don't I don't know building. Mm -hmm. When you say build, you mean just turn it all off, turn it back on. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's great. All turn right. it on and turn it off. It's that talk, simple. Just talk to me like I don't know anything because I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's you magic. cyber guy. It's magic. Way to go. Way to be really smart. <laughs> you guys are impressive. <laughs> So that, that's pretty much it. I, I, one other thing that I do recommend is if you do go the Tails route, have a Tails, because it's so cheap and easy, okay. just have it for different purposes. I have one, if, if I was gonna do online banking, I would have one for online banking and that's all I use it for. I would have a separate one for other things that I do and so on. Got it. When you do all this, does it slow down your yes. computer a lot? A little bit. It slows down the network connection because it's got to encrypt things and you know, it takes a little bit of time, but it's generally not that bad. Got it's it. just a couple of seconds. That's okay. the price for anonymity. Got Nothing's it. free. Okay, cool. 
and all of our tech is spying on us at every moment so there's that In different ways yes that's correct too <laughs> Very good. We'll do another video on that. Hey, how about that? Guys, this is Troy. Troy, thanks so much for uh, showing us yeah. all of the things sure. and using something that I can understand. I understand this yep. very, very well. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications bell, like, comment, all that good stuff. Share videos, shop Warrior Poet Society because it's awesome. Give Troy a round of applause right now because he's a cyber guy. He'll know whether you did it or not. He's watching you, right? now. Uh, train hard, train smart. We'll see you next time.